Mongolia is one of the only places still left in the world that you can travel with a horse. Those two beautiful animals belong to us. Many tourists each year come here to ride horses themselves. And for thousands of years, this land and culture have been linked to those animals. But what does exploring a country on a horse actually look like? What are the problems and challenges that we had to face along the way? I'm just not in a shape to do this anymore. And why do we believe that such traveling style will not exist anymore in just 10 years? Well, all of those questions will be answered in today's fifth and final part of our Mongolian adventure. As you might remember, in the last episode we managed to reach our desired destination. It's so clear, it's so beautiful. <laughs> and after spending two whole days resting deep in a Mongolian wilderness at the stunning Black Lake. Just going to sleep early today and uh, yeah, getting ready for the adventures ahead. It was again time for us to start heading back. Just looking forward for the day when my body regret gains its whole strength. We've been eating good, we've been sleeping well. It felt a little strange that although we had spent two days resting, our energy reserves had not fully recovered. Like you're running on 50% of the power or something like that. I woke up and I can't properly see. Uh, my vision is blurry from basically both of the eyes. It's gonna make riding so much harder. But what we didn't realize was that those were only the first symptoms of something much bigger that would put our whole expedition in danger. As we started the long journey back, it actually felt nice being back on a road. The horses were well rested and effortlessly they carried us through deep rivers and squeezed between tall trees. Compared to just few days prior, the nature itself was much more inviting. Sun was shining through the pine forest and moments like this are definitely what we will miss most about Mongolia. It had been nearly a week since we last saw another living person and riding our horses in such tranquil and remote landscapes was without a doubt an experience we will cherish until the end of our days. I was preparing my horse for lunch and hit with a tail in my face. <laughs> As lunchtime came around, Lisa's vision had luckily recovered. It's crazy to think how our bodies act when put under such stress. No matter if you're healthy or sick, things can shut down and malfunction without any warning. Yet not everything that came with the sunshine played in our favor. Holy! You see, for the past three days, we had been oblivious to the fact that those lands were also home to someone else. This is a bear track from yesterday, most likely. Not that keen on having bears with us, but yeah, it's fine, it's fine, it's totally fine. There's more bear, bear tracks, small ones next to big ones. It was a mama bear with cubs, the most dangerous time of the year to meet the bear. And that's the only time where brown bears are aggressive. Knowledge of this put us on the edge. Oh, oh. And we tried our hardest to make our whereabouts known. At least horses don't seem to know what they're bears. They are acting totally normal, just doing their own thing. Yet with every kilometer forward, we began to understand that the road back wasn't half as difficult as we remembered. Some of it had to do with the weather, because crossing swamps, wetlands, 
and mountains during a sunny day was many times easier compared to the storms we had to encounter last time. What was that like? <laughs> Even the stressful parts, like the swarms of flies, we managed to handle better and try to find humor and irony in the situation we were in. Even when there's just a few flies, my horse turns quite neurotic. There's no horse flies, nothing at the moment, but you can see the bobbing in here. The... So, to make it fun for everybody. Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Oh, what's fun it is to ride in a one horse open sleigh. Hey! Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Oh, much fun it is to ride in a one horse open sleigh. Yet weather wasn't the only thing that had changed. By this time, we had spent more than a week with our horses, and taking care of them had become part of our routine. How are you, my friends? Hello. Hello, Charlie. Billy boy. Billy boy, how's your day been? It was in a way like being a parent, having the responsibility to take care of another living being and always putting their needs in front of your own. But it does get easier every day because you get used to all of the things that you're going to have to do in the evenings, in the mornings with the horses. It becomes more natural and it, it's not that much of an effort and it's not that much of a panic to, I don't know, get everything done. And no, it still wasn't easy. He almost kicked me in the face five times. <laughs> but as the saying goes, humans can adapt to almost anything. I think it's day nine or day ten. <laughs> I sort of just missed that. I wouldn't have to filter my water every evening. That I, I wouldn't have to build up my house every evening. It's, I'm starting to miss the comforts of, of modern life. <sighs> so yes, it definitely wasn't easy, but somehow we still made it work. We rode so many kilometers today. Everybody is just super tired. Horses are tired, we are stressed. But we literally rode in one day what we did in two when coming here. We planned our routes ahead. Woke up earlier. First thing in the morning, you go and you release your baby. And took advantage of the landscape that we now knew. And to our surprise, instead of the previous five days, it just took us three to once again reach civilization. We got about two more kilometers until civilization. It was a strange feeling seeing other people after 10 days in the wild. Bundle of sheep. Houses, villages, cattle and the sheep. And we're back where we started. Feels super weird to be in Terajiga. Everything looked the same, but it sure felt different. Almost like we didn't belong there anymore. We had previously been given an opportunity to be picked up by a truck in Teranj. Yet as we arrived there, we all felt like we needed a little more time to adjust. And so instead, we decided to take the next four days to slowly ride back home and once again get used to other people around us. Of course, not everything about civilization was strange. First time in my life I get to tie my horse to a pole and go to the store myself. And already on the first night, we got to do a thing we had been dreaming about for days. Oh, you already had a cart. <laughs> oh my God, we just chopped like little kids. Candy, lemonade, cheese balls, <laughs> like all the crap food, but 
I feel like we deserve that. We do deserve it. And I still feel we didn't buy enough. And on this evening, we really felt like champions. Do I look good? You look amazing, Lex. Thank you. Cheers. 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 Ten days in the wild. We freaking made it. <laughs> Feels like two months, to be honest. <sighs> By this point. Lex has been dreaming oh. about chicken nuggets for days. And he has his chance. Like he bought oil and he's literally deep frying chicken nuggets on the side of the mountain. It's sort of poetic. <laughs> I'm not sure if it was the stress relief that my body felt after making it out alive from the national park. Yet as I woke up the next day, something felt off. Shivering tonight for two hours in a row. Missed a lot of sleep and, and got them quite sick. I had let my guards down and finally, the strain of the adventure had caught up with me. I'm not sure how I'm gonna finish this, this journey. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie. I did sort of enjoy the low bass voice. Far over the misty mountains go. But there were still four days of riding ahead and things were not looking good. This of course wasn't the only bad surprise we had to deal with that morning. They say butterflies are good omens. And no, I'm not talking about the infamous butterfly invasion. Like an earring. But much more about the fact that as we started riding, it just wasn't the same. Our routes here ran next to highways. And instead of stunning views and endless freedom... Suddenly a new problem. Everything next to the road seems to be fenced off. I haven't seen that before in Mongolia. Green fences, brown fences, big fences, small fences. It just felt illegal. How could it be that we were in a country that's known for its nomadic lifestyle and horses, but here it was almost impossible to ride? It's sort of weird feeling to pass a gas station on your horse, knowing that he needs gas, but yeah, not having it around. There's been so many horses and horse tours in the area that there just isn't enough good grass. What surrounded us now was the type of Mongolia that most visitors get to see. Over there is Turtle Rock, a reason why many tourists want to come here. Tourist camps stretched as far as the eye could see. <laughs> Hundreds of yurts and gers rising from the green landscapes. Garbage, garbage, garbage. And of course, thousands of people everywhere. Yeah, suddenly there's like 15 big, big tour buses. Seeing this side of the country made me a little sad, but I guess this is what urbanization does all around the world. Another huge hotel being built over there. Hundreds of rooms. When we were riding between nomadic families just a day before that, it felt like we belonged there. But out here, we were the aliens. Everybody just looking at us. Other tourists took our pictures. Three strange foreigners on horses. Oh, hi. Hi. Hey, hey. Where are you from? Huh? Where are you from? And handling all of this attention wasn't easy. I was already heavily dosed up on painkillers. And whenever there was a beautiful sight yeah. or a temple on the road, I felt relieved. Because while Lizu and Lex got to experience local culture, I was able to sneak in a small nap to gather my strength. Who are you? Like a million bucks. Don't get me wrong, I'm not saying that there was something wrong with this area. The temples here were beautiful. And if you haven't seen the wild part of Mongolia, even the views can be considered quite stunning. Over there you can pay money to take a picture with a with a eagle. The famous Mongolian golden eagles. It was like any other touristic place all around the world. 
with activities like horse and camel riding for curious visitors and many souvenir shops on the side of the roads. Garbage, 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 garbage everywhere. I hope you wouldn't show to me and say trash. No, precious. Precious. My precious. I guess we just were not ready for it. In our heads, Mongolia still was the land of nomadic families and horse lords. But when we talked about it with locals, they said that 15 years ago it was still possible to easily ride through these lands. But now, with the fences and new development, they wouldn't recommend it. At present day, about 25% of Mongolian population still lives a nomadic lifestyle. But due to much more unpredictable weather patterns, many of them are forced to leave this lifestyle behind each year and look for more stable work in the cities to feed their families. It was devastating to hear how fast the old way of life was dying. And on the following days, we got to see the aftermath of this migration. Our plan now is to follow the mountains and we're trying to sneak by a city next to us. Around us were stretched out cities full of people that just a decade ago lived the life of a nomad. That's the city down there that we're trying to avoid. It took all of our strength and navigation skills to guide our horses through those suburbs and cityscapes. And it quickly became clear why in the first place we were taken to our location with a truck. Our last big hurdle is crossing the highway. But in a weird way, I was still happy that we took this route. We'll see if we can fit through the tunnel. Yes, it was far from easy riding. There's horse poop, so we're not the only ones. But at the same time, we got to see the parts of Mongolia that most people never will. We experienced on our own skin what it means to live by the old traditions in rapidly developing areas of the country. As we've discovered, being in cities or even villages with horses is absolutely uncomfortable. And I'd like to believe that this helped us understand the struggles of this nation a little better. I'm not gonna lie, in our heads, we will always remember this country by its endless step. Beautiful mountains. And untouched nature. On the afternoon of the 14th day, we reached our final destination. We had gone the full circle, there and back again. We were really expecting the horses to be Super happy, super glad. They're just like, what is this place? Why are we here? There was no champagne and fireworks waiting for us at the finish line. We made it home, buddy. We're home. But deep down we knew that we had accomplished something incredible. Against all odds, we decided to follow our hearts. It was the hardest thing we had ever done in our lives. And seeing this dream become real was... It was magical. I've been waiting for this moment for a long time. We can let the horses go free. How do you feel, Lex? I'm feeling very good. I'm very happy to see them like this, but most of all to be rid of them. <laughs> <laughs> no more tying ropes, taking care of them. No more hobbles. No more being attached to a fucking 400 kilo <laughs> being that like requires lots of attention 24 7 so yeah i need to i needed to get that out of my system oh. comments it seems like lex is not ready for kids yet <laughs> uh, did you hear that my friend you are somebody else's problem now she's like and i still I like But now thinking about it, believe it or not, 
I would go back in an instant.